In the name of God, the All-Merciful, the Ever-Merciful, and Allah's blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad and upon his pure family. Peace be upon you, our respected viewers, and welcome to another episode of the Shia Calendar program. Today is the 3rd of Rajab, the anniversary of the martyrdom of Imam Hadi alayhi salam. Imam Abu al-Hasan Ali al naqi al-Hadi, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, known as Imam Hadi, the 10th Imam of Shia. The Imam was born on the 15th of Dhul Hijjah, 212 after Hijrat, around Medina at a place called Siraya. Imam Hadi, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, and his son Imam Hassan, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, were known as Askariyan because the Abbasid Caliph took them to Samarra, Asker, since 233 after Hijrat, and they were supervised till the end of their holy life. Imam Hadi alayhi salam was also known as a Naqi, a Lam scholar, Faqih, jurist, I mean trustworthy, and Tayyib as well. His nickname was Abu al-Hasan, as the nickname of Imam Musa Kazim and Imam Riza were also Abu al-Hasan. Now, in order not to fall into confusion, Imam Kazim alayhi salam was known as the first Abu al-Hasan, and then Imam Riza alayhi salam was known as the second Abu al-Hasan, and Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam was known as the third Abu al-Hasan. His respected father was Imam Jawad alayhi salam and his respected mother was Sama who was a very virtuous lady. Imam Hadi alayhi salam became Imam while he was six or eight years old in 220 after Hijrat, that is after the martyrdom of Imam Jawad alayhi salam. The period of his imamate was 33 years, coinciding with the caliphate of Mu'tasim, Basij, Mutawakkil, Muntasir, Mu'tasim and Mu'tazir. The greatness of the character of Imam Hadi alayhi salam was to the extent that his friends and his enemies confessed to. Some of these confessions were based on the moral character of Imam as well as his scientific dimension, which was the result of his generosity. Imam Hadi alayhi salam had a pure soul and firm decision to the extent that no one could be compared with him. Ibn Shahar Ayyub narrates from Rajal that he had the best and the purest behavior among the people of the society. He was the most truthful person in society. When he was silent, dignity and splendor appeared in his face, and when he was talking, he had witty remarks and short speech to the extent that his speech affected the soul of human beings. The great moral characteristics were significantly evident in the Imam as some of his most moral characteristics are Imamate, perfection and knowledge. God the Almighty with his endless power has granted the secrets of knowledge to the family of the Prophet and has decorated them with the ornament of the knowledge. Now these treasures are the collections of divine secret knowledge that God the Almighty has granted to Imams of Shia that are the true leaders of the humans. Imam Hadi, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, who is one of the Imams of Shia and a member of the family of the Prophet, Allah's blessings, peace be upon him and upon his pure family, has also the extended and comprehensive knowledge to the extent that this cultural and scientific symbols have sured the great thinkers as well. Imam Hadi alayhi salam who is one of the Imams of Shia and a member of the family of the Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him and upon his pure family, has also the extended and comprehensive knowledge to the extent that this cultural and scientific symbols have surprised many great thinkers and philosophers. The Abbasids were very afraid of leadership of Shia and therefore believed that the movement of Shia against them was very dangerous. Thus, they concluded that they could achieve their goals by taking Imam al-Hadi away from the center of Shi'ism in Medina, which was a place where the Shi'as were gathering him. As a result, they again employed the policy of exile and military supervision, which was a successful experience of Abbasids. Mutawakkil sent a letter to Imam Hadi upon finding out the content of the letter 
Imam Hadi alayhi salam sent a letter back to Mutawakkil and informed him of his enmity, malice, and lies of the writer of the letter. Mutawakkil employed a tyrannical and double standard policy. First, he dismissed the writer of the letter who had slandered Imam in order to pretend that he was the lover of Imam and then he ordered his cleric to write a letter to Imam and pretend that Mutawakkil loves Imam. However, the real content of this letter was the verdict of capturing Imam and taking him from Medina to Samarra. In this way, Yazdid, the Christian doctor of the court, who was aware of calling Imam and was also aware of Mutawakkil's intention, said the following. Based on what I heard, the intention of the Caliph by calling Muhammad ibn Ali, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, and taking him to Samarra was to prevent people from tending to his famous character so that Abbasids would not lose power. Now, in order to decrease the negative outcomes of capturing a man, Mutawakkil wrote a very respectful letter to him. However, writing a letter with such respectable words by the person like Mutawakkil, who oppressed the family of the Prophet and who ever had a leadership with them, was very surprising and indicates the fear of these bloodthirsty enemies of Shia from Imam. Now he simultaneously showed humility in front of Imam and on the other hand he used to call himself the commander of the faithful people and kept his title for himself alone. He wanted to show Imam that he has not accepted the wilayat of the family of the Prophet and Imam also has to follow him. He continuously praised the great position of the Imam However, he sent Yahya ibn Harthama to take care of the Imam. This is why the history shows that Yahya ibn Harthama was accompanied by 300 armed soldiers. When Yahya ibn Harthama came to Imam for the notification and preparation of the exile, the people gathered in front of the Imam's house and complained, objected and yammered to the extent that Yahya stated the following. I had not seen such a kind of objection till that day, and I tried a lot, but I couldn't calm them. I swore that I had not bad intention about Imams Hadi alayhi salam, and was not useful as well. Then I searched the house, but I couldn't find anything except Quran, books, and things like that. Imam was exiled in 243 after Hijrat. When they exiled the Imam to Samarra according to the Mavakkil's command, they took the Imam to a place called Khanus Sa'alik that was the place that poor people were gathered together in. Sahl ibn Sa'id, by seeing the Imam's residence, told him, O oh, the son of the Prophet of God, these oppressors try to extinguish your light, and because of this they have kept you in the place of the poor people. Imam replied upon that to him, O oh, the son of Said, is that your understanding and do you think that we will be humiliated by these actions? Though during the caliphate of Mutawakkil, Imam Hadi, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, had a very difficult time. The fear of Mutawakkil from Imam made him order his soldiers to enter the house of Imam from the wall occasionally and search the place. Then they crossed the borders and insulted the holy Imam. It's been narrated in the history books that sometimes Mutawakkil called out Imam while he was drunk in order to humiliate him. Every time that Mutawakkil tried to destroy the character of Imam in a cowardly way, he was defeated. The continuous and useless efforts and failures of Mutawakkil in achieving his goals were to the extent that one day he shouted at his companions and said the following, Woe on you! I don't know what to do with Ibn Ariza. He has made a lot of difficulties for me and made me so confused. I tried to take him drink a sip of wine, but it was not useful. Mutawakkil's failure made him to conspire the martyrdom of a man. 
Thus he orders Sa'id Hajab to kill him. Ibn Orma says, I went to Sa'id Hajab, and it was the time that Mutawakkil had submitted Abu al-Hasan alayhi salam to him in order to kill him. Sa'id looked at me and told me ridiculously, Do you want to see your God? I said, God cannot be seen by eyes. He said upon that, I mean the one that can you call him a man? I said, yes. He said, I was assigned to kill him and I will do it tomorrow. Now the courier with him and when he comes out, you can enter. When the courier came out, I entered the house that the Imam was imprisoned in. I entered and saw that they dug a grave in front of Imam. I greeted and cried a lot. Imam asked me, why are you crying? I said, for the thing that I am seeing. He said, do not cry for that. They cannot achieve the goal. It won't take them more than two years that God will kill him and his supporters. I swear to God, it was not more than two days that Mutawakkil was killed. In another plot, Mutawakkil brought four of his henchmen to kill a man with a sword. He was so angry to the extent that he swore to burn the body of a man after he is murdered. The executioners of Mutawakkil, who were waiting for a man with their swords to kill him, were affected by seeing the dignity and glory of a man, that they forgot even their decision and even escorted him respectfully. When they returned, Mutawakkil asked them, why didn't you follow my order? They answered that the dignity and glory we saw was more than that to be afraid of one-handed soldiers. We did not have the power in front of the Imam. He just affected us and influenced us to the extent that we could not do what you have asked us to do. Thus once more conspiracy of Imam's murder was failed as well. During two decades of caliphate, Mutawakkil did nothing but bad behavior and killing Shias and finally he was entrapped by the hatred that he had towards the family of the Prophet and their followers. The night that Mutawakkil was killed, Abade Mukanuz, the clown of the court, was ridiculing a man of Shia and Mutawakkil's wine party, as he always did. Mutawakkil by that time was drinking wine and was laughing loudly. Muntasir, his son, who loved the Imams of Shia, got very angry of that behavior at Ibadah and threatened him secretly. Ibadah did not continue his work. Mutawakkil understood and asked him the reason. Ibadah said the reason. At this time, Muntasir stood up and said, O oh, commander of the faithful, the one that this dog is ridiculing and the people are laughing is your cousin and the head of your family and he is your pride as well. If you won't eat his meat, meaning backbiting him, eat it up, but do not let that dog and his followers eat with you as well. In order to ridicule his son due to his interests in Imam Ali, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, Mutawakkil asked the singers to sing a nasty lyric about him and his mother. This indecent behavior Mutawakkil made his son plot the conspiracy of murdering Mutawakkil at that night. Thus he plotted the conspiracy of the murder of Mutawakkil accompanied by the Turks and his minister Fat Ibn Kagan killed him as well. After killing Mutawakkil, Imam Hadi lived for seven years and the time of next caliphs. Although the pressure of the system of caliphate compared to the profit of Mutawakkil decreased, the main policies of the system, except the period of Muntasir, a line when anti-Islam policy did not change too much and Imam was continuously under military supervision and he was pending his life in that condition. Finally, the conspiracy of the enemies of Imam Hadi السلام, made him poisoned with Mu'taz's order and the poison 
that Mu'tamid poured in water or pouring bait. Abu Dawood says Imam was hospitalized and I went to visit him. When I was leaving, he said, as you have come to visit me, so you have the right on me and I have to preserve your right. He was sick in bed and the Shias were visiting him. Imam Hadi, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, introduced the next Imam orally and also in written form, so that after his martyrdom, the Shias could not be confused. Imam Hadi, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, was martyred on the 3rd of Rajab, 254 after Hijrat. Ahmad ibn Dawood says, I was carrying the possessions of people that many of them were Khumus and religious foes of people of Qom to deliver them to Abu Hassan. When I arrived, a man who was riding a camel came up to me and said, O Ahmad ibn Dawood and O Muhammad ibn Ishaq, I am carrying a letter from your master, Abu Hassan, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, which is an address to you. Tonight I will join the divine shrine thus. Be careful till the command of my son Hassan is delivered to you. When we heard this news, we became very sad and cried, but we did not tell this news to the people who were accompanying us. The reflection of the news of martyrdom of Imam of Shia hurt the heart of the oppressed people. The whole city was unanimously in grief of that great teacher and the compassionate father of the poor and orphans. On the day of the martyrdom of Imam, a large crowd of Bani Hashim, Bani Abu Talib and Bani Abbas gathered in the house of Imam and were mourning him inside the house. People were slapping their own faces and were scratching their cheeks. They took the holy body of Imam Hadi السلام, on the shoulder and they passed the holy house of Musa ibn Baga. When Mu'tamid Abbasid saw them, he decided to use the method of demigoratory and pray over the body of a man. Thus he ordered to put the holy body of a man in order to pray over his body. However, Imam Hassan al-Askari had prayed over the holy body of Imam accompanied by Shias before the funeral. Then Imam was buried in one of the houses that he was imprisoned in. The overcrowding was to the extent that Imam Hassan al-Askari could pass with difficulties through the crowd. At this time, a young man brought a vehicle for Imam and people escorted him to his house. This is for today. Until we meet again, may Allah accept our condolences. And thank you very much indeed. Until we meet next again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.